youth this morning. They have been missing being up here ministering the word of God, and so we are glad that they are here this morning. So encourage them. Amen. 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 Blessings, 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 every time I turn around, blessings, 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 every time I turn around, blessings, 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 every time I turn around, blessings, 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 every time I turn around, blessings, 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 every time I
is our blessing. we come this morning to give you all the praise and all the glory, God. Because it was you who lied her down last night. And Lord, it was you who woke her this morning with a finger of your love, God. With our heart and being right on time. With the blood still went around through our bodies, God. God, you've been good, God, no matter how yesterday might look, God. But God, we declare and decree in the day that you have given us, God. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. Lord, we pray that you will have your way in this in service today, God. God, let your spirit have a free course in here this morning, God. God, but we need you. We can't do anything without you, God. God, we come this morning taking nothing for granted, God. God, it's all about you, God, and not about us, God. God, keep us under your care, God. Because, God, I know you got the whole world in the hollow of your hand, God. God, keep us, God, from all hurt, harm, and danger, God. For, God, it was you who let your lights shine, that there will be no darkness, God. And, God, no matter how you do it, God, the darkness will never take over the light, God. God, let your light guide us. Be that there lamp into our feet and the light into our path, God. God, we can't go wrong without you, God. It is you, God, who sent your only begotten son down to 42 generations, God, that we might have the right to the tree of life, God. And God, when he did what he did, God, he home bled and died. Not for his sin, but the sins of the world, God. And God, we want to thank you this morning, God. We thank you for Jesus. All the one who died on that old rugged cross. God, we want to thank you this morning, God. Thank you, Lord. And God, I pray on each and every one together here this morning, God, that bless us in a special way, God. God, continue to bless the under shepherd is in our church, God, and his family, God. God bless each and every family here, God. God bless these son deacon that are standing on each of my sides, God. God, keep us, God. God, look down there see a young choir that is singing this morning, God. Song designed from their heart, God. God, keep them encouraged, God. Let them stay on the path that they are going on right now, God. Teach them the way they should go, family. God, we need you right now, God. We're living in some perilous time, God. God, famine, God. These diseases, God. God, this is unjust of races, God. God, we need you in a time such as this, God. God, we give you all the glory and all the praise because you've been good to us, God. It might not look that way, but you still, God, in the midst of it all, God. And God, we're going to continue to lean on you, God, from your unchanging ways, God. God, you are the just God. You let it rain on the just as well as the unjust God. God, we want to thank you, God. We want to praise your holy name because you are worthy, God, from the rising of the sun into the going down of the same, God. God, you will not change, God. Now, God, we want to we want to worship you for a while, God, because you are worthy, God, and you inhabit our praise, God. Whether we give it to you or not, you, you want our praise, God. But you said in your word, if you don't pray, I might make the rocks crowd out and praise me, God. And God, we want to thank you this morning, God. 
God, we have prayed our last prayer and sung our last song, God. When Jesus left him, he did not leave us comfortless, God. He said, I will lead the Holy Spirit that will guide you and lead you, God, if you just only depend on it, God. But he said, I will come back. He said, I will come back. And where I go, I'm going to prepare a place that you might also be there with me, God. And God, I want to thank you, God. When you crack the sky, God, I'm going to be ready, God. But there will be no more crying in God. No more dying in God. Well, the undertaker will be out of a job, God. God, we want to thank you, God. We got a home on high, God, that hands did not build, God. You didn't need no architect, God. You didn't need no builders, God. You spoke it into existence, God. And we want to thank you this morning, God. God, we give you all the glory and all the praise, God. Now, God, bring your word in on now, on the shepherd, God. Tell him what to tell your people this morning, God, that it might help us along this teaser journey, God, because you said it's going to get hard at times, God. But you also said, look to you, God, where all our help come from. And we want to thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> I don't know about you, but every time I come into the house of worship, there's just a joy in my soul. It's a joy, it's a joy in my soul uh, to come before God and, and uh, we come together as his people uh, with one purpose, to praise and worship him, praise and worship his name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. And uh, as I said, our praise comes from the fact that we know he has been good to us. Amen. 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 And um, that's why when two or three of us come from different walks of life, meaning you've been doing something totally different in your life this week, and you had your trials that's different than someone else's trials. They've been doing something different than you. And then God bring all of us together from our personal trials, our personal uh, week, and we come together and put all that aside just to tell God, thank you for another day. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for another day. Everybody don't know what you've been through this week. But God knows. And everybody don't know what any of us been through, you or anyone else, but God knows. And the fact that we feel able to get up, move about, Jesus, Woo. hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. Uh, it's so good to see our uh, youth praise team back together. 
and I know they are socially distancing, but it's good to see them back praising God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm really excited about uh, them coming back and being safe uh, as they return, but yet got a praise to give God. It's so good because if youth don't see youth, they cannot be inspired to feel like church is for them too and participating. And if men don't see men, giving God praise. I mean real men, giving God praise. They would think that men are not to give God praise. And so that's why I love, love the diversity of, of age groups and uh, gender participating in this church because it's let everyone know no matter what age you are, no matter what gender you are, no matter what race you are, this is a place you can come to give God praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. And uh, so we want to, um, I don't think we have any announcements this morning, but we want to get our hearts and our mind ready to be a blessing to the kingdom of God. Uh, giving of your, you know, giving of your 10% to God, it's really not about money. Some people think, oh, God just want my money. God gave you the money. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> what God trying to teach us is discipline, accountability. You know how accountable, trustworthy, disciplined you need to be before you take care of your bills? To be disciplined enough to say, well, let me make sure I give God what belongs to him. That'll make you keep your checkbook right. It'll make you disciplined every week, every time you get a blessing, say, you know what, I'm trustworthy, I'm loyal to God, I'm disciplined enough to say, God, I'm gonna bless you, and it bring organization to your life. It bring organization to your life. Uh, now, I know a lot of people might have missed that because I'm gonna move on, but the discipline and the organization and the being trustworthy is what ties us about. God saying, I want to see how disciplined you are. Can I trust you? Amen. Can you uh, bring accountability and structure to your life? And if a person can't structure God in, well, let me put it away, structure God in because you can, amen? And you'll find out all those things I just said bring that structure, accountability, and uh, discipline to your life. And you'll say, you know what, tithes is so much more than just giving to God. It is my life coming in order. All right, to God be the praise and glory, amen. Uh, we're gonna prepare our hearts and our mind to give. Uh, thank God for and I really mean this, and I say it every Sunday, I'm gonna keep saying it uh, until uh, we are back in church because there's not a Sunday that we don't have, um, you know, a large group of people watching and praise, watching online, praising God right along with us and giving right along with us. You know, we don't see them here, but uh, they are sending in their financial support and their tithes and their offering. So I thank God for them. I thank God that they're tuned in. Um, I just said last Sunday, don't get so used to um, the, the convenience. You know, you can get so used to the convenience that when this is all over with, you'll just say, Pastor, I like how I was doing it. I don't, I can continue to do it that way. According to the scriptures, the Bible said, don't forsake the assembly of yourselves together. Something happens 
when we come together to praise God. Amen. Amen. But in the meantime, the second best thing is being at home watching it um, at, this, uh, you know, at the safety of your home at this time. All right. Our tithing pledge, we know it by heart. Uh, we don't put it on the screen, but we do know it by heart. So um, let us all stand. Minister McKinnon is going to lead us to our tithing pledge today. Amen. I am a tither, and I support the kingdom of God on this earth. I believe that the Parkview Christian Life Center is doing kingdom business, and therefore I plant my seed in great ground that it will bring forth prosperity in every area of my life. I have no time for doubt or doubters. I am taught to obey the word of God so that the blessings of Christ shall overtake me and the favor of God shall find me and my cup shall run over. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's seed time. We know that all money comes from the ground, so it is intended to be planted in the right place, and that way it will grow. Father, we thank you for this gift that has been given and the spirit in which they have been given and received. Examine us, O Lord, and prove us. Try our reins and our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, and thank you for this offering. Amen. Hallelujah.
is my worship, all of my worship, he sees my worship, all of my worship, is my worship, all of my worship.
Hallelujah. Receive my worship, God, all of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my worship. Here is my worship. Hallelujah. Glory. Yeah, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Come on, let's just say it together. This is my worship. This is my worship. All over the church. This is my worship. Glory God. Come on, all in the back, say it. This is my worship. Yeah, Lord, worship him. My worship. Glory, God. This is my worship. This is my worship. Glory, God. All of my worship. Yeah, Lord. Glory, God. Glory, God. Glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Glory. I ah, thank you, Jesus. Glory. Glory, God. Glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm, Jesus. It's all right wherever you're standing. It's all right to praise his name. It's all right to magnify him. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Glory, God. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, we come before you today, and we say thank you for your goodness and your mercy toward us. You're blessing us right, you are blessing us right now. And we say thank you, Lord Jesus. We magnify you. Hallelujah. With our praise, God. Glory be the God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory be to God. In the name of Christ Jesus, we come together today, Jesus, and we declare in your name there will be a breakthrough. Yokes will be broken. Hallelujah. Burden will be destroyed. The captives will be set free. And we say thank you right now, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Let every heart say amen and amen. Our young adults there, youth, our youth, young adult youth, they've been home stir, stir, stirring up and uh, ready to get back loose to give God some praise. Amen. They really led us into worship, and I thank God for it, leading us into worship. Uh, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for the Word of God today. Uh, let's go to the book of John, if you will. I want to say again, y'all done an excellent, excellent uh, ministry in leading us into the Word. Amen. Amen. After all a week can bring, yes. when I come to the house of the Lord, let me just speak for myself. I want to leave the world on the outside. It'll be there when we get out of here. But while we're in God's house, I want to feel and know that I'm in the presence of God. Hallelujah. The church of God is like no other place on earth. If his presence is here, then you can call it a church. If this present is not in the building, it's just another building. Amen. Y'all in the book of John in chapter, I want you to go to chapter 6, if you will. And 
let's just going to read about 10, 11 verses right quick. Chapter 6, verse 47. Let's start there. I'm going to have you pick up at verse 48 until we finish. We're going to be finishing round verse 58. Verse 47, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Your father did eat mamma in the wilderness and are dead. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat my, eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Amen. And as the living Father has sent me, and I have lived by the Father, so he that eateth me, even shall, even he shall live by me. Amen. You may be seated in the present Lord. Uh, we was looking last week and what an awesome time the Lord had us uh, go through the scripture and get revelation of what true life is all about. Uh, there's two type of lives that a human being uh, experience and that's the physical life and hopefully he, well, the human being is going to experience two type of life regardless. He will experience his physical life or her physical life and they will experience spiritual life. Now, spiritual life can be experienced in two ways. That's spiritual death and spiritual life. You can have the Holy Spirit and you can experience what it is to have true life. You can be absent of the Holy Spirit, but you still have a spiritual life. It's just a life with the devil and it's a dead life. It's a dark life, but you still have life because a human being do have spirit, a spirit. Every human being cannot live without having a spirit. Uh, we are spirit beings. Now, your spirit may not be saved, but you have a spirit. Every human being must have a spirit. We must have a body. We must have a soul. But when Jesus talks about this beautiful thing called life, he's talking about the spiritual life, the spiritual life. He is not talking about the physical life, not at all. He's certainly not talking about the life of darkness, the life of not being saved. He's talking about one type of life, the spirit man, the spirit life that only he can give, only God can give us this life. And this life is what Jesus is talking about us to, uh, to us today about uh, how to obtain this wonderful, wonderful life. See, the physical life is temporary. It's temporal. It's temporary. And that's for all of us. Sad to say, but true. The physical life is a temporary life. And sometimes some people live longer than others, but it's all still temporary. Some people can make it over 100, but it's still temporary. Some people can only make it less than 10 years old. It doesn't matter whether the 100 or your physical life is 10 years old. You can live to be 110 or just 10. The key is, where do you go after this temporary life is over? Because really, there's not a whole lot of difference between years. You know, uh, time go by so fast. 
The key is, where do you go? And that depends on the decision you make while you are alive. Choosing Jesus as your Lord and Savior is not about just going to heaven. It's about bringing the kingdom of God down to earth. Let that will be done on earth as it has been done in heaven. In other words, God is saying, experience some kingdom life on earth. Live the kingdom life while you're on earth and also experience a better kingdom life when you get to heaven. All right, so God is talking about this wonderful thing called life. A lot of us miss it. Last week we looked and it said, in Jesus was life and life and the life was the light of men. And uh, what an excellent time we had in the Lord receiving revelation on that. And it's still on DVT, on the DVD. So certainly if you want to pick that up, pick it up so you can be where I am today. Because I'm going to move forward from what I talked about last week about Jesus is uh, our life and he is our light. What an awesome revelation that was. Um, but I want to talk about just the light, the life that God talks about. And he says this, uh, that life, uh, he was the only one that had spiritual life. Now, every human being, let's go from the physical realm first. All of our lives is in our blood. Life, the human being life is in the blood. Amen. Even if you got bad blood, the doctor will tell you you need a blood transfusion to live. All the um, cells that fight off the germs and many other things is in our blood. Here's the thing about a human being blood. It, it is life for the physical man. It is life for the physical man. You got to make sure you take care of your blood. Don't put too much sugar, too much salt, too much of nothing that mess with the blood. Because life is in, the physical life is in the blood. All life exists um, that has blood. The blood got to be right. All right, now, so when Jesus talk about how do we get life, I want you to notice he talks about in order for us to get spiritual life, it's going to take blood. How would we receive life from him? It's going to take his blood. Notice what we just read. He that drinks my blood shall have life. Now that sound, let's look at it again, if you will. Want to focus in on this scripture. Uh, Jesus said, um, Verse 53, put it on the screen for me. Verse 53. Then said Jesus unto them, verily, verily. Now, when Jesus said verily, verily, he means listen very, very, uh, very carefully. Pay attention. You know how we do when we want someone to pay attention. We say, listen, listen now. That's what Jesus is saying. I want you to listen. Listen. Linda. I don't know why I threw that. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. Y'all pray for pastor. <laughs> but Jesus said, I want you to really listen. How do you get life? It's going to take blood. Life is in the blood. Hallelujah. If Jesus don't shed blood for our sins, we won't have life. Now, I want you to notice something. We can go back to verse 53 in a minute. I want you to notice something. When it comes to human, like if someone needs a blood transfusion, you can get good blood from a human being. Got to have good blood. Ain't no use of their blood just as bad as yours. 
you got to get somebody with what? Good blood. Clean blood. Pure blood. But in that blood that is good from a human being, there's still sin in the blood. Now they kept you alive, but you didn't get holy blood. Because all a human being can give is sinful blood. Come on, church. No human being blood can sustain your spirit life. They can continue to have you live physically for a while. So when Jesus said this in verse 53, now let's look at it. Jesus says, Verily, verily, listen very carefully. I say unto you, except the man eat my flesh, eat the flesh of the Son of Man, then he said, and drink his blood, he has no life in him. So it sounds like Jesus saying, I got to cover you with my blood. Come on, church. See, the blood in the Bible, the blood in the Bible has always been so important. Even before Jesus came and died on the cross, God told the children of Israel, you can use the blood of an animal. And that blood of the animal will cover you for a year. But you got to come back next year for, to be real toned. But notice, God still said, I want the blood of an animal. But it's a temporary blood until the real Lamb of God come. Come on, church. But I'll see you next year. And you brought bring another sheep or a goat. Y'all hear me? That's why the Bible say, if the, if the blood of sheep and goats, y'all ready? Now listen carefully. The Bible say, if the blood of sheep and goats can keep us for one year, how much more can the blood of Jesus? Come on now. If the blood of a goat can hold you a year, how much longer? That's why Jesus says, he that drink my blood has eternal life. A goat can hold you a year, but God can hold you forever. Come on now, church. Jesus is able to hold you forever. Somebody say forever. Come on, say it back to me and say, it's going to take blood. To redeem us. To sanctify us. And make us whole. Now listen, not the blood of each other. We messed up our blood in the garden. Let me talk for a minute. I'm coming back to verse 53. We messed up our blood in the garden of Eden. Sin entered the blood when man disobeyed God. I want you to see something that God did. When Adam and Eve had sinned and called themselves, going to cover their sins. Someone say cover their sins. Go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis chapter. I want you to go to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 7. Let's go there. Genesis 3 and 7. Put that on the screen. We're coming back to John in a few minutes, Genesis 3 and 7, says, and their eyes, and the eyes of both of them were open. After they sinned, they knew good and evil. The both their eyes were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves 
aprons. Watch this. When Adam and Eve sinned, please listen carefully, church, for those that are tuned in online. When Adam and Eve sinned, to try to cover themselves, they went and got something without blood in it. I don't care. Listen, listen. Human beings sin all the time. And they always want to cover themselves with something beside the blood. Watch this. Man sinned, and when he got ready to try to cover himself, he didn't do it with life. Life is in the blood. He went to a fig tree. You know, I always think that that's what the fruit they ate. I, I, I think that. I, the Bible don't make it plain. But I think they took a fig. Because usually people try to cover themselves up with the same thing they messed up with. This is why I messed up. So I guess I can use the same, same tree to cover up. But it didn't have blood in it. Are y'all listening? Somebody say, thank God for the blood. Come on now. Come on, let's just take a praise break. Give God, Jesus, praise for the blood. See, a, a lot of people don't even understand. A lot of people don't understand when we talk talking about the blood. The blood should never lose its power. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. We 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 start declaring the blood of Jesus over a lot of things and walking in authority of the blood, because there's life in the blood. If you've been born again, you should have joy right now. You ought to be full of joy and peace right now. That's you got to talk about the blood. The devil hate when Christian talks about the blood. He, 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 he loves, you know, he can put up with a lot of sermon, but not a blood sermon. He don't like a blood sermon because the blood of Jesus gave us life. See, watch this. On Calvary, on Calvary, the devil thought when he put the nails in Jesus' hand, matter of fact, it started a lot earlier. Ooh, Jesus, when they took him to the whip whipping post and they tied him and they began to whip Jesus with this strike with bones and stone in it and they began to lacerate his back and blood began to pour out of his back. So as he walked uh, toward uh, the Golgotha Hill, as he walked toward the cross, everywhere he was stepping, blood would drop him. Oh, Jesus. The De La Rosa, the road they call the De La Rosa road, where Jesus had to walk about a mile uphill, yeah. bleeding, yeah. blood dropping, yeah. covering the ground. You know, that's where we came from. Covering dirt yeah. from where he pulled us from. Thank you, Jesus. The devil thought when he was whipping him, he was hurting him. All he was doing was letting the blood cover. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody said, thank God for the blood. <laughs> How would you have liked to have been on the De La Rosa Road that day and see Jesus walk by and you walk behind him and step in a little spot of the blood? <laughs> Hallelujah. Then the devil thought he really had him. When he got the cavalry, he said, let's spill some more blood. So he put spikes in his hand, both of them, spikes in his feet. And to make sure, watch this, when you're ignorant, you do crazy stuff. And then they lift him up high. Not only so the blood can hit the ground, but the wind can carry it. Somebody say, thank God for the blood. It's going to take blood. It's not going to take our looks. It's not going to take our education. It's not going to take our well-being. If you are not covered by the blood, the devil got a hold on you. 
Matter of fact, the blood was so important when the deaf angel was going through Egypt that night. God said, take blood, temporary blood from a, some type of animal and put the blood on the doorpost. And when deaf see blood, y'all ain't hear me. When the deaf angel see the blood, it won't, t look, when the deaf angel come to your house and see blood on the doorpost, let me stop, watch this, watch this, y'all ready? When the deaf angel come by your house, your temple, when the deaf angel come by your house and see you covered by the blood, he knows that he can only touch you physically, but he can't touch your life. He can't take you out of God's hands. He got, death got to pass you by. You've been born again, wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in the blood. And the devil said, I can only mess with your body, but I sure can't touch your soul. Because you cover by the blood. And when the devil see you, this is what he says. If you cover by the blood, he says, if I mess with them, they're only going to be absent from the body. But I can't mess with them spiritually because they're going to be present with God. Somebody say, thank God for the blood in here. So God said that night, he said, the devil ain't you coming. But if you have the blood on the doorpost, your house, when the deaf angel see the blood, no matter how much he want to come in, he know that he got to pass you by. Listen, listen, if a loved one were born again, let me tell you what, you ought to be rejoicing today because death could not touch them. And let me say this before I move on. Nobody knows who's in heaven. So don't sit around and try to judge. Some of them folk that you think didn't make it. Glory be the God. Made it in. Nobody on the ground on Calvary Mountain thought that male factor that were hanging by Jesus, that thief, that murderer that were hanging beside Jesus, nobody thought he made it in. But before he died, before he died, he turned over to the blood and said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus looked back at him and said, today, you shall be with me in paradise. Come on, somebody in here. So the people on the ground thought they were putting him up there to go to hell, but he saw the blood. So you don't know what nobody said with their last breath. Glory be the God. You, know, you don't know what no one said in their transition. Glory be the God. So, this is so important. They took fig leaves, no blood in it. They tried to cover themselves. Now I want you to look what God did. Go in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 21. In verse 21, the Bible says, unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. How do you get skin from an animal? Amen, somebody. You have to kill them. In order to kill an animal, they got to shed their blood. <laughs> God say, take that fig leaf off. You need some blood covering. 
Come on, church. You need to be covered by something that had life in it. What do we see God doing? The very first blood sacrifice in the Bible was Genesis 3 and 21. Who made it? God. The last sacrifice in the Bible was on the cross. Who made that one? God. From the first sacrifice to the last sacrifice, God gave us both. And both of them had to do with something that was living that had to shed blood for sinful man. Now, some people miss this. They think coming to church is about having a good time. Yes, you ought to have a good time. We ought to worship. When them young people were singing today about this is my worship, this is, this is my worship, right? When they were saying that, my mind went on this message. You don't even, some people don't even know what they're worshiping. But when you really get in tune with he died on a cross, he shed it, his blood, and they buried it in a tomb. But on the third day, he got up. I'm worshiping because he gave his life. You Listen, if you're going to ever worship somebody, it's nothing like worshiping someone that gives their life. And I'm not talking about temporary life, but Jesus. He gave his life for his followers. The only God you ever going to read about that, that gave his life for the sheep. Amen. Amen. I wouldn't want to be in any other religion because this one that dealing with Christ is where the leader gave his life for the followers. Amen. What kind of love is this? Amen, somebody. Amen. That Jesus will give his life for those that follow him. So watch this. Now, the blood is so important. So Jesus said this. Let's go back to John chapter 6. Jesus says in verse 53, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Now, when Jesus said that, you know, think about this. When you are spiritually ignorant of something, all you do is go back to the natural. When Jesus said, eat my flesh, that sounds like cannibalism. Drink my blood? Man, what in the world? They was confused. Because as you're talking about eating flesh and drinking blood, and they said, how can this man give his flesh to eat? See, Jesus was not talking about natural. He's saying, watch it. He was saying, if you want life, you need a blood transfusion. In order to get, or get a blood transfusion, somebody got to shed some. And Jesus was saying, what I want you to do, if you want to have life in you, you got to get covered by my blood. How do you do it? By confessing our sin. And by believing that Jesus died for the sin. Then he sends the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, somebody. And when the Holy Spirit comes in us, you have your life. You have what the blood cover. The blood cover the fact that we have a right to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The blood means that if you confess your sin and ask God to save you, he'll send himself, which is the Holy Spirit. Now, don't sit there and, and just look like, well, okay, I got the Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive all that God is. You are, you are sanctified bad down to your bones in the realm of the Spirit if you know the authority and the power of what God sent you when he sent you the Holy Spirit. 
Listen, he sent you, he sent you and I the most powerful spirit on earth and in heaven above. Listen why I say you are bad down to your sanctified bone. When you understand the authority of the Holy Spirit and you have the blood all over you, the devil will tremble. Amen, somebody. At who's inside of you. He, he don't care nothing about us, but the one that lives inside of us. He, he, he trembles when you know who you are in Christ. When you, listen, listen. When you walk in the authority of the Holy Spirit called Jesus shed his blood, you don't plead with the devil. Let me help y'all save you some energy. You don't walk around your house and you don't walk in dark situations pleading with the devil. Like, you know, some people don't understand what God gave them and they're pleading with the devil. Like, you know, like, like a devil, you know, plead, leave me alone. I can't take no more. Uh, uh, I'm sick and tired. The devil don't respect none of that. That's not authority. That's not walking in power. You don't beg no devil. And then you don't spend all night to get him out your life. You don't need five, 15, 20 prayer warriors holding a seance when you understand the power you have when it's into you. You have enough power down inside of you by yourself to cast out any devil that messing with your children, trying to mess with in your home, mess with your mind, you walk in that authority. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. Two of men of us been taught wrong. Like the devil, you got to plead the devil to leave your marriage, plead the devil to leave this, lead that. Like, look, no, no, you command him yeah. in the name of Jesus. And if he act like he's deaf or hearing, then you talk about the blood. Listen, this boy was a lunatic. Jesus was up in the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. They was up there praying, and Moses and Elijah appeared. But he left the other nine disciples and some of the other down on the foot of the mountain. And the father brought, a father brought his son to his disciples. You got to notice now, Peter, James, and John is with Jesus. The inner circle is with Jesus. He left the other one down. But the man noticed that y'all his disciples now. Y'all ought to be able to cast out this demon my boy has. <laughs> and so he brought it to the disciples. The disciples spent a lot of time. Come out, devil. Come out. And the boy kept rolling in the fire, cutting himself. I said, come out, devil. And let me tell you something. You can say, come out in the name of Jesus and have no authority if you don't know who you are. So they all wrestling with the devil and the little boy. And finally, Jesus come off the mountain transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. And he walks up to the camp. And the father bring his boy to, the, to Jesus and says, I brought him to your disciples. And they couldn't heal him. Jesus looked at the disciples and said, how long shall I be with you? Y'all, y'all stay with me now. He, then he said, bring that boy here. And then the devil, Jesus said to the devil, come out. He didn't beg. <laughs> he didn't plead. When you walk in authority, you don't beg and you don't plead. Come on here, somebody. Somebody said, authority is in my house. Come on, say authority is in my mouth. Authority is on my tongue. And what's mine is mine in Christ. It'd be like this. If, if, if somebody came over your home, see, you got to know what's yours. If somebody came over your home, you left your lawnmower in the driveway. They came over your home and just took your lawnmower out your driveway and put it in their driveway. You don't go there begging for that thing. Something wrong with you, you got to beg for it. If it's yours, you walk into the authority. When you go over to that house, you don't go begging and pleading. You go to get what belongs to you. Joy is yours. 
why don't you go and get it? Somebody said, I'm through begging the devil. I have authority. Jesus, come out the man. And the devil just came out. Matter of fact, one time, one time, the devil saw Jesus coming when he was, you know, he, and he, he cried out, why in the world have you come? I know you came to cast us out before time. Jesus said, right, go in them halls. Now watch this. Watch this. The demonic spirit have to live somewhere. So the demonic spirit, when they saw Jesus, they went to pleading with Jesus. Let us, can we at least go in the halls? We need to live in something. Ooh, Jesus, let me help y'all out before I go any further. Some people walk around house, y'all, y'all, y'all are a little too spooky for me sometimes. <laughs> there is no spirit in your home. There's no spirit uh, just floating in the air. Spirit need a house, a body. You notice when the devil got ready to deceive Adam and Eve, he had to enter into a body. He just didn't float around the garden. He had to find something he can get into. So don't be walking around your house talking about, no, no. It. You might want to look at the person next to you. <laughs> But sp spirits are just not floating. Like I saw a spirit. No, you ain't seen no spirit. When you see a spirit, it gonna come walking at you in something. Hallelujah, somebody. That's why God said this, I'm a spirit and no man has seen me at any time. So quit being so spooky, scaring yourself. <laughs> Jesus never cast the devil out of nothing. I hope y'all got that. He never cast the devil out of nothing. He was always in something. Come on, give God a praise up in there. He, he, he had to cast it out of something. Glory be to God. That's why sometimes it's good to take your own hands. What did y'all say? Lay it on yourself. You have power. Come on, let's do it right now. Lay your hands on yourself. And just say, in my hands, I have power to have a sound mind. Love, power, and come on, say a sound mind. Hallelujah. The authority of the blood gives you power to lay hands on yourself. Sometime at night or sometime when stuff too depressing and bothering you, you take your hand and you put it somewhere on yourself and you declare in Jesus' name, I have the authority just like the priest, just like the bishop, just like the pastor, because if he has the Holy, Holy Spirit, there's no increments of the Holy Spirit. Either you have him or you don't. Glory be to God. Somebody give him praise for the blood one more time. Thank God for the blood. Matter of fact, let's, let's, let's make the devil mad. Come on, declare long life, peace, and joy shall rule me. In the name of Jesus, the blood has been covered. I walk in power and authority from generation to generation. I set in motion the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, somebody. Give God a shout praise. Hallelujah. Glory be the God. Jesus says, Jesus said, I want y'all to understand something, that the blood of Jesus, this, this no, this no, this just no figment of our imagination. He shed it, blood. He understood that without the shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sin. So the devil was so blind. 
Matter of fact, let me try to close. Matter of fact, when Jesus was picking his disciples, come on now, he picked 12 men, and one of them was a devil. Why did Jesus pick the devil, Judas, to be among him? Because he knew he would need the devil to shed blood. The other one wasn't going to deceive him. He needed somebody that would be deceptive. So he knew that if he just put the devil in there, he knew sooner or later he'd get the devil to play his game, to get him on the cross. And so all it took was a little silver and gold. 30 pieces of silver, and Judas sold him out. But he was a devil from the beginning. Now watch this. It's all right to hang around devils as long as you know who they are and where they are. You can't go to, on your job. You can't go anywhere where devils are not there. Matter of fact, the devil was in Jesus' church. Don't you know he's in our church? But in the name of Jesus, he has no power, he has no authority to change anything. Life will be transformed. You will be blessed. You will walk in authority. And the devil in hell can't stop you from getting what God has for you. It's all right to have the devil hanging around. Jesus said, come on. One time I asked that question. I said, Jesus, I made a statement. I said, Jesus, if it was me, I want to pick that devil. That's before I understood. He said to me back in a spiritual way, he says, listen, I was trying to show all you pastors that if you start a church, the devil going to be there. Okay. Amen, somebody. But let me tell you how the best way to get the devil out of any place. Now, nobody may want, nobody may want to get up and leave right now. <laughs> Wherever you got to go, you might want to sit still for a while. <laughs> but let me tell you the best way to get the devil out of any place. You tired of the devil? If you tired of the devil messing with your mind, your emotion won't let you sleep, won't let you just be normal, you tired of him? This is how the devil this will make the devil leave every time. He can't stand praise. Yeah. Praise aggravates him. Praise frustrates him. He put you through so much so you can complain and murmur. He can't stand when you're going through a lot, you start praising God. When you're going through a lot and you start giving God praise, the devil will leave. He can't hang around praise. If, if your money's short and you're having a struggle financially, if you just start saying, if you start worrying about that money, the devil gonna hang around you all day. He's going to lay down in bed with you and sleep right beside you and touch you 3 o'clock in the morning like, you still ain't got that money? <laughs> but if you having a money problem and you want the devil to leave, you start telling the devil this, my God, he shall supply all my needs. My God, eyes is on a sparrow. And if I know he can feed the sparrow, I know he got a plan for me. When you begin to give God praise, the devil say, I'm out of here. I done put you through all this, all this hell and high water, and you still giving God praise, and you just continue to praise God. He leaves, and when he leaves, the Holy Spirit takes over. He can't stand praise. I said, the devil can't stand praise. I said, that's why we're about to praise him right now. Because the devil can't stand praise. Whatever you're going through right now, come on, get up and give God a praise. 
because the devil can't stand you giving God praise. Hallelujah. Praise him for everything. Praise him for the good and the bad. Praise him for the ups and the down. Praise him for the bitter and the sweet. Praise him for every tear you have to dry, drop. Give God praise and the devil got to get up out of here. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord open up their mouth and give God praise. Praise him through COVID-19. COVID-19. Give him a praise that God that kept us all year long, all last night, woke us up early this morning, and the blood is still running warm in our veins. Give him a shout praise if you know he's good to you right now. Hallelujah! Somebody say, thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Hallelujah! Thank you for the power of the blood. Amen, somebody. Glory be the God. One day, Jesus, one day Jesus took a disciple up to the upper room. He was about to depart out of this world, and he said, he took a cup. That's why communion is important. He took a cup and bread. He said, now, he broke the bread and said, this is my body. I'm breaking it for you. He said, I want y'all to eat it. And as often as you eat this bread, come on, church, you show remembrance of me. Then he took a cup. And he sipped and he said, now the cup represent my blood. And often as you drink it, you, re you, you show remembrance of me till I come again. So every first Sunday of the month, part of you come together just to remind the devil that what you did on Calvary is not the end of the story. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Let me tell you something. Let me get up a little higher here. Let me tell you something that all losers, all losers hate to be reminded of when they lost. If your favorite team went to the Super Bowl and lost, you don't want to talk about it. And every time somebody bring it up, you still don't want to talk about it. You don't want to talk about how your team lost, what play they lost on. You don't want to talk about the fumble. You don't want to talk about the touchdown. You just say, I don't want to talk about it. The devil don't want to talk about Calvary. The devil don't want to talk about the blood. But I know somebody that won and everybody that been redeemed we want to talk about victory. So watch this. Every first Sunday we come together, we remind the devil. I don't believe he come to church on first Sunday. We remind the devil he lost. Don't wait for first Sunday. The next time he try to come in your house, remind him, no losers come in here. Give him a shout, pray. The next time he try to come in your relationship, say, no losers come in here. Only winners come over here. Give God a praise up in here. Jesus has redeemed us, sanctified us, gave us victory by the blood. I don't watch, I don't watch wrestling anymore. Long time ago, I used to watch wrestling. They got all that kind of other stuff now. Amen. But back in the day, they used to have a tag team. Y'all remember me tag team wrestling? How many of y'all remember the, the tag team? The purpose of having a partner on the outside of the rope was if you were getting a beat down. 
if you just can crawl, roll, any way possible over to your partner, but you had to tag. You had to make the connection. It had to make a divine connection. You can swipe and miss, and you still get a beat down. But if you can just reach your hand up and tag. Come on, somebody. Come on, reach your hand up today. If you just can tag. When they tag, their partner came in. And that partner went to stomping while you recovered. And when you recover and he had the one that was whipping you down, he would tag you and say, now go in there and put your foot on it. The devil, let's close church, lift up the right foot and say, the devil, he's under my feet. You might well put a hurt on him. Come on, somebody. Glory. Come on, give him a shout praise all over this place. Hallelujah. That's the God we serve. He gave us the victory. Hallelujah. Let's just sing a verse of it. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today.
if God has given you great revelation today that life is in the blood. Jesus had to die. He had to die by shedding blood. Matter of fact, John the Baptist, when he saw him, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that's going to take away the sin of the world. Ooh, Lord Jesus, let me put this towel down. Let me, let me just pray blessing all over you. Jesus, we thank you. We are your children. We are your heirs. We are joint heirs with you, Christ. Lord, everybody in here that's dealing with any attack of the devil in any capacity of their lives, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke that devil with authority. We don't plead with him. We don't beg him. We tell him, in the name of Jesus, you got to leave. Hallelujah. The peace that passes all understanding that keeps your mind and your heart in Christ Jesus, let it rest on you today. I declare it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let your heart say amen. That's why the Bible says you enter into the throne room of God boldly because you're family. Amen. Blood family. As we all stand, everyone that's able and willing, another opportunity to be a part of the body of Christ is before us right now. The reason we stand every Sunday because this is the time we say the opportunity, invitation to give your life to Christ is before you. I've seen many people come over the years and their life have been changed for the better. It's your walking. It's your mind made up. Only you can do it. And someone at home listening, you can get ready to accept Jesus Christ by confessing your sin asking Jesus to accept you, and he will. The second reason we stand today is if there's someone who has already given their life to Christ, but they want to become a part of this local, growing, blessed ministry, then you can come and be a part of this local church. You're already saved, but you want to connect to your covering, local church. Amen. So that be in it today uh, for salvation or for membership. Don't allow the devil to discourage you. Make this your day. And come boldly wherever you are. Amen. Go ahead and play. Amen. Come boldly. Oh, give God a praise. I'm glad to see y'all come. Keep going. Yeah, Lord. If there be any others. there be any others. Hallelujah. Wherever you may be, if God is speaking to you about giving your life to Christ, mm, what a great decision you'll make today by doing it. If God is speaking to you about this local church, I know this is a place where God rests and he speaks. Hallelujah. Well, let's give God a praise for the two that have come this morning. Glory be to God. It's always good. I'll say a little bit about that after I work. Sister Harrington. Pastor David, you have Sister Niyasa. I'm going to have y'all turn, please. Okay. You have Sister Niyasa and Brother Alvin Cottrell speaking to you. All right, Brother Cottrell and Sister Cottrell. Glad to have y'all. I'm glad that the Holy, I got one. I have, I'm glad that y'all been led by the Holy Spirit. I have seen y'all sit there for a while, and that let me know that y'all was in prayer about what, where God would have you go and come. And the prayer 
is over because God has said, this is your church home now. I am so glad to be your covering, your pastor. Looking forward to what the Lord will do with you and the place you will find in worship and this ministry. And uh, let's just give God praise, church, for them coming today. Amen. <laughs> let, me, what, what, let me hold that. Uh, and if either one of you want to, I'm going to pray uh, in a minute. If you want to tell us anything, anyone want to talk? You good? Okay. Y'all, y'all, y'all good. All right. Now, lift your hand. Father God, in Jesus' name, thank you so much for brother and sister Portrayal, right? Portrayal? Portrayal. Lord, thank you that they already know you. Bless their just being in this area. Let them find purpose like never before. Bless their union, bless their marriage, bless their family. God, just walk with them. Nothing happened by chance or accident. You have appointed all the things that have happened in their lives for purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless y'all so much. If you would just follow these ladies, they're going to take great care of you. God bless you, my brother. All right. To God be the praise and all the glory. You may be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. Amen. God is so good. Don't let the devil get into victory. What is this? I got it. I <laughs> uh, want to say that Deacon uh, Mike's, right? Mark's, Deacon Mark, Deacon Mark. Uh, and some of you may have heard Deacon Mark and Sister Mark and then Deacon Mark. We have quite a few new Deacon and you may not know them all, but some the deacon certainly know. And uh, we got a, a word last night, him and Sister Mark, um, daughter made transition last night. She passed away, passed from this life into eternal life. Uh, but it happened suddenly. And so I certainly want the deacons that to do what you do. You take care of each other and then we will find out more um, later on and then we'll let you know uh, their plans once we know their plans but keep them Deacon Mark, Sister Mark in prayer and the family in prayer and that's all I know for now uh, but uh, um, prayer is powerful and uh, we want to do exactly that amen all right and we'll be stopping uh, by or uh, and stopping by now is not always called these days before you just start dropping in on people. Uh, you know why, you know, make sure they're ready, make sure they can uh, just not get a bunch of people at this time with all things that are going on in this world. So give a call and see will it be okay to drop by and uh, we'll take it from there. To God be all the praise and glory, the blood. The blood of Jesus was shed on the hill called Calvary. Thank God for what he has said today. Thank God for the members, two new members, and divine covering all over you. Wherever you go, Jesus has you. Amen? Um, now, I want to say this. Um, take me off camera. Uh, my son Travis told me to tell y'all this for everybody I'm all